On June 24, 2021, our Miami-Dade community was shaken to its very core by the historic collapse of the 12-story Chaplin Tower South Condominium. For most of us and for most of America, this unbelievable tragedy tore at our very hearts. The loss of 98 lives was and is still painfully tragic. But for a group of alleged identity thieves, it was a time to make some money. And that is the subject of today. It's about identity theft. Joining me today are many who need no introduction. I'd like to start with our very distinguished mayor, Daniela Livincava, who was masterful in navigating this, this really horrible disaster. Our Miami-Dade County, our one and only, our Sally Heyman, who continues to this day to be a beacon of passion. Senator Jason Pizzo is very, he's over there on the outskirts, but let me tell you, he was in the thick of this, and he's always been a, a person of great compassion and a true believer in well, how he can help those that are so vulnerable. Appreciate you being here, Senator. Uh, we also have our U.S. Postal Inspector in charge, Joe Cronin. He's fairly new to our community, but we're very grateful that he's here. Thank you. Uh, they have always been, Postal Inspector has always been a great partner of ours in law enforcement. Uh, we also have another great partner in the Secret Service. I have to say that they were particularly helpful in helping us get with the GPS tracking devices. And again, we thank you. Um, that we have our deputy special agent in charge here is Phil. Um, we also have the chief of Aventura Police Department, Chief Brian Pegas, who led along with Surfside and Metro Dade Police Department this operation along with our federal partners chief. You and your department always do a great job, as does yours and, and yours in Surfside. And of course, he's right behind me, but uh, Fernand Charles from Metro Dade, uh, we thank you always for your support and your assistance. Uh, we also want to recognize Major Michael uh, Bentolilia, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Detective Ken Seeley, Detective Sandra Marquez, who did an outstanding job. By the way, the detectives are not here today, right now, because they're doing what we need them to be doing. They're out there working, and they executed the uh, arrest warrants this morning. We also want to recognize uh, the Surfside's acting chief captain, John Healy, um, Captain Antonia Marciante, Sergeant Marianne Cruz, who I understand was very integral. She's here in the room with us back there. Thank you very much, Sergeant. Uh, Detective Andres Mendoza was critical, uh, one of the, the detectives that's on the actual arrest warrant. From Metro Day Police Department, I already mentioned Major Fernand Charles. We want to thank Chief Richard Amion, P.I. Argemis Colomb, uh, and of course, I got to recognize our director, your director, uh, Freddie Ramirez, who always does an incredible job for this community in law enforcement. And last but not least, not that I saved the best for last, but I really want to recognize two of our prosecutors because they did an outstanding job and that is Chief Stuart Hedrick is here. He is the head of our cyber crimes unit. And if I tell you how hard he works every day and night, because everything today with subpoenas and warrants involves technology. And so he is always our go-to guy for the whole office. Thank you, Stuart, so much. And then Stacy Cleveland, who is just one of the smartest lawyers I know. And she's done an absolute outstanding job on this very on this very complicated uh, white collar crime case. Thank you, Stacy. And I just realized I forgot, and I, I, but maybe I really did save the last for Beth. Our U.S. Marshal, Gaddy, is, continues to be everybody's partner. This is him right here. He's, he's the shorter one we put in the back. Sorry about that, Gaddy. So, um, so having introduced this great team, what I'd like to do now is talk about why we're here today. We discussed that cyber grave robbers did move very quickly after the collapse to grab what they could from deceased victims while families and friends were in absolute emotional turmoil. Their motto could have been, your loss is our gain. Now let me also say this investigation is ongoing. 
So today what we are providing are only some examples of the various transactions from the arrest warrant, the affidavits, which is available to each and every one of you. We will try to ship it out to you later. They were just unsealed by the court. There are many other transactions that are contained in those arrest affidavits. And as I said, they will be available to you. But as of today, we are aware of seven victims who were impacted. Five were deceased and two were, fortunately, are alive and well today. We in law enforcement moved very quickly because we wanted to stop these thefts from continuing on a daily basis. So as to questions that you all may have regarding other additional victims, we can't answer that today. It's all speculative. This, uh, this um, investigation is ongoing, and we try to keep you tuned as we go forward. So in the beginning, the actions of the identity thefts were first recognized by a sister of one of the deceased victims on or about July 9th of 2021. Think about that. That's only 16 days after the buildings collapse. The sister notified the Surfside Police Department, and since that, since that collapse, that she had noticed that her mailing address was changed with some of her financial institution information, that replacement credit cards were requested to be mailed to a new address, that there were multiple unauthorized wire transfers that were initiated from the deceased account to other accounts, that a number of purchases uh, were made where fraudulent purchases were put on these other cards, such as on July 8th for Medusa Sandals at $374.50 at the Nordstrom in, in Aventura. The Aventura's Police Department investigation was able to capture, with the assistance of the security of the mall on their closed security TV, a female in her car which was a Mercedes, that left this merchandise, that left this merchandise, I'm sorry, the tag was registered to one of the thieves. Additionally, Barclays Bank had contacted or had contact with Aventure Police Department that on July 6, 2021, a female called, claiming to be the deceased and asking to send a replacement card to the same address where that car I just told you about was traced to. The deceased victim's husband, by the way, was also a victim uh, of identity theft. Additionally, this joint criminal investigation determined that the apartment that was used was and has been vacant and unoccupied. It is also alleged that it was being used as a drop box location for these offenders whose real addresses were in completely different locations. So what we have now is we have a variety of clips for you to see. And we're going to start, George, with it's an edited excerpt of a phone call where the caller claims that she was a victim of the Surfside condominium collapse. Would you please play that, George? You turn it up, George?
I think that's it for that clip. Um, just real quickly, I don't know if you noticed in parentheses at the bottom of the responses was the word Medina. Uh, that's going to end up being one of our key targets. You'll see later as we announce what the charges are and who was, had, was arrested. So in order uh, to get these replacement cards, you know, and quickly as possible so she could use it, she immediately had the card transfer shipped express mail to an alternate address. And so also you will see this at that time. So we'll play, uh, George, if you would please, play the next audio clip. And can you turn it up, George? Yeah. Right, so it says, okay. Thank you, one moment. All right, Ms. Ortiz, did you have Rita Barclay's VU MasterCard? How can you answer? Yes, I wanted to get my card shipped to me uh, to an alternative address. Okay, I'm sorry, you would like to get a new card to be sent to an alternate address? Yes. Okay, and can you mail me out a pin to as well? Yes, you can do it, ma'am, but you can only do it once you already receive the card. So yes, ma'am, I'm ready for that alternate address where we'll be sending this card to. Okay, 300 Northeast First Court. That's the number one, and then SC Court, apartment 101. Just want to clarify, that's 300 Northeast First Court, apartment 101, and then what is the city? Hollandale, H-A-L-L-A-N-D-A-L-E, Beach, Florida, 33009. Ms. Ortiz, you'll be receiving the card in the mail within, um, oh, you'll be getting the card tomorrow. So you heard that that was the, uh, the call overnight to get the new card and have it sh sent to 3001 Northeast First Court address. That's the one in Holland there. By the way, that's the same address we told you about a few minutes ago. Um, now we want to try another clip for you. Uh, I'm sorry. We did that. We just we did that one. I apologize. So what we have next is a video clip, because what you'll see is the the video clip will show that these credit cards that you just saw how those are just examples. There are lots and lots of them. Lots of phone calls. But what you'll see is they immediately went into use. They immediately started buying. So. As I can tell you that between July 7th and 9th, just in those two days, there were 28 attempted transactions, including at an ATM at the Aventura Mall, which was also, by the way, caught on closed circuit TV, um, and then at a Christian Louboutin in Miami's design district. And then our main suspect also purchased a black Versace purse valued at $1,658.50 at the Versace store in the design district, again, using the deceased woman's account. On July 22nd, 2021, so it's just several days later, our main suspect, using a different Chaplin Towers victim's account and carrying her new distinctive Versace purse, went to Bloomingdale's and charged $2,500 at Bloomingdale's in the Aventura Mall. And we are now going to play that clip for you, George. That's the uh, video clip, please, George. We've also, t we may play this back, but. Okay. This is the main target, main suspect right there. You see the. It, inside that yellow, they tried to highlight it for you, is the actual Versace bag that I just told you about she had purchased several days before. Uh, you can continue, George. Thank you.
off she goes. So, based on the excellent police and prosecutors work with our federal partners, we are announcing the arrest of Betsy Alejandro Cache Medina. Yes, thank you, Ed. Sorry, Sally. I will try to not put it in <laughs> Um, Kimberly Michelle Johnson, Rodney Schutte, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, I hope so. And among the charges that they face are organized scheme to defraud, identity theft, trafficking in credit cards, use of counterfeit and fictitious ID. And the bond for these defendants has been set at $1 million for Medina, $500,000 for Johnson, and $430,000 for Schutte. This investigation has also shown that these individuals appear to be very skilled identity thieves. They're professionals. Except for their names, almost nothing else about them seems to be true. For example, they use multiple addresses where they have not, nor have they ever been living at. They use a type of Dropbox location that is very common tactic of subjects engaged in fraud-related crimes. The suspects select vacant apartments with a mailbox that they can easily access. That's exactly what they did. They use that address to receive rela the related mail to all of their schemes and also to help protect their true residential location. For instance, the car that I mentioned to you that was caught in the mall uh, was registered to Betsy Alejandro Cache Medina. It went to a vacant address in Hallidale. Uh, when she actually leases her, her real residence is somewhere else in the Miami-Dade County area. Medina provided a copy of a counterfeit Social Security card bearing her name with a fraudulent Social Security number. One of the cards Medina also regularly uses, cards, I'm sorry, not cards, she regularly uses is a gray infinity SUV. It is driven also with a counterfeit Florida temporary license plate. Medina, in order to assist her associate, Kimberly Michelle Johnson, to rent a condo in the same complex where Medina lives, indicated that Johnson was her sister. Johnson, in renting her real residence in Miami-Dade County, presented also a counterfeit Florida driver's license number containing a driver's license number that is not issued in Florida and a counterfeit Social Security card with her name and a fictitious Social Security number. Since March 18th, 2020, Johnson has the Hallandale address listed on her state Florida driver's license as her mailing address. Then there's Medina's boyfriend, Rodney Schutte who is also on her condo lease. He provided a counterfeit New Jersey driver's license number bearing his photograph and a name of Rodney Pierre with the date of birth of June 28, 1974. He also provided a counterfeit Social Security card bearing the name Rodney Pierre and a fraudulent Social Security number. Together, Johnson, Medina, and Schutte and potentially other yet unidentified co-conspirators were all acting in concert to steal and utilize the identities of both deceased and living survivors of the Surfside Tower collapse. This group so stole the identity of at least five different Chaplin Tower South Condominium victims. I'm sorry, it should be seven. It was of seven that we know of and two of which are still surviving. There's also evidence of another victim who's not connected to the South Florida area. You may read about that in the affidavit. There are also two other known of victims that were not part of the Chaplin Tower that are also mentioned in the arrest affidavit. We do not discuss them today or all the other transactions. Right now, we estimate that these characters who were quick to rob the deceased have successfully stolen at least $45,000. And that does not include 
another 67,000 that we know of today that they tried to steal. But because of the excellent work of security and loss prevention experts at the various banking institutions and the mall and the different stores, they were able to reject a lot of those attempted transactions. So in conclusion, our community has been shaken at the horror that we've seen with the collapse of the Chaplin Tower South Condominium. And now we're also further aggravated and shocked by those who would use this tragedy, use this tragedy to enrich themselves. But we will not let any of those involved in these crimes get away with them. All of us here, every single one of us, promise you that. Thank you.